Good evening, everyone. Welcome, and welcome to, to this episode of the research. Of the research. Um, um, today, we, our, our presentation will be very, very brief. Since, and since this is the last, last presentation, and given the, given the fact that, that most, of most of us are not uh, quite, familiar quite familiar with, with some of the uh, issues, in issues in qualitative research, or how, or how qualitative research findings, findings are presented. I think we will delve, um, delve much, much into qualitative um, findings, findings, how to present qualitative findings in our, in our research, research work. OK. OK. So, so this is the last episode. Last episode. Yeah. Forgive, me, forgive me for the mistake here. OK. OK. So now, so the, now point is, the point is, um, what, um, what, what, are what are the various ways presenting, presenting qualitative results, results or qualitative, or qualitative findings? findings. In our write-up. In our write-up. Now, now we have, we have generally, generally we have the thematic analysis. analysis. It, looks it looks as if the thematic analysis the kind is a of kind of you know primary, primary data, data presentation, presentation or data analysis technique, technique for all qualitative, all qualitative research. research. Because the because content, the content analysis, analysis in a way in a way comes up or boils down, down, down to thematic analysis. analysis. Okay. Okay. So, so usually, usually graduate students will make mention of thematic analysis, but they wouldn't make us understand what kind of thematic analysis they are doing. So basically, we have two general ways of doing thematic analysis. And these are the and these are the deductive the deductive analysis or the deductive approach and then the inductive approach. One thing about qualitative um, study is that it is very flexible in nature. Why am I saying qualitative research is flexible because in terms of data presentation and analysis, we don't even test assumptions. Unlike the quantitative research where they will ask you, was your data normally distributed or were you able to meet the non-parametric -parametric and the parametric um, um, assumptions? assumptions. None, of these None of these assumptions are applicable in, in qualitative, qualitative research. So, so how you, how you present your qualitative, qualitative results, um, results depends, depends on you. On you. you can do, you can it, do it deductively or inductively. Or inductively. So what is so what is inductive, uh, deductive, uh, deductive analysis? When we are talking, we are talking about, about deductive analysis, analysis we, want we want to draw, to draw our, our, your attention to the fact that whenever, whenever you, you go, have you, approach you approach your research or you start, you start your analysis or data, or data collection with preconceived themes or objectives or, objective or, theories, or theories, you are doing, you are doing deductive, deductive analysis. It means, it means that, that, in other words, it means that you know, you know what you are looking at for in the data. Okay, you are okay, going, you are going there, there with preconceived, preconceived teams or theories, or theories that you want to the data to want to want to get from get the from the data. But there is but another, there is another form of analysis analysis which the researcher, the researcher don't, don't have to go there with any assumed or preconceived team. In this case, you in let this case you let the data speak so for you. Analyze so you analyze any you 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 you, 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 you consider relevant to your study. Okay. okay, so, so these are the two main approaches of doing uh, thematic, thematic analysis. analysis. But, but the general understanding, understanding is that it, 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 involves, it involves the organization, organization of teams, teams and sorting out teams to answer, answer a particular research question. So thematic, so thematic analysis has to do with organizing your data into teams based on your research objectives or questions. Okay. But then the, but point, then the point is, what is the, what is the difference between Thematic, thematic analysis, analysis and then the qualitative content analysis. Qualitative, qualitative content, content analysis generally, generally has to do with you know, analyzing, you know, analyzing um, or gathering, or gathering data, data from, 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 from tests. tests. When we talk when about, we talk tests, about we tests, we mean, you know, a, a, published, a published test. It could be video. It could be, video, it could it could be, symbols, be symbols or written or tests, whatever. whatever. Or audio. Or audio. Yeah, These yeah, are all tests. tests. Okay. Okay. So, so that is the that is the difference between the two. But usually, but usually when we talk about general thematic analysis, analysis, we are talking about data, data um, primary data that you have, have, you have uh, collected in, the in the field. But the quant so qualitative, qualitative content, content analysis usually deals with secondary, secondary data, 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 data that has already been already published, been published probably in the probably in the book or on YouTube or something of that sort. Okay. Okay. So, so without, without wasting my time, let's dive, um, dive into the issue, issue of the day. Somebody, somebody, understand. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Mr. Abu. Mr. Abu. You have an, you issue. Have an issue. Okay. Yes, please. There's a kind of feedback. Feedback. What? What? There's a the feedback. Is as, is it? as you're speaking, there's a feedback. That's it. Like we hear a double speak. Okay, feedback. Okay, okay. feedback. Okay. If you can work on the feedback. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's take note of this. You've gone to the field, you have gathered data. Let's use interview data or whatever data you have gathered. You need to understand that unlike quantitative research where you put your, um, the data into um, a data analysis software to provide you with answers, probably give you differences in terms of gender, qualitative research, there is nothing of that sort. Everything has to do with you, the researcher. There is nothing like a software um, coming to give you the differences between or test any hypothesis for you. Qualitative research is based on the researcher's subjective you know, explanation or interpretation of data. So you need to understand that the interview transcripts, the field notes, and the observ observation notes that you have gathered from the data, they, they just provide a descriptive account of the data, but they do not provide explanations Okay, it is a description of the views of the people, but they do not provide in-depth explanation. And that is the responsibility of the researcher. That is where you come to draw inferences, to speculate based on what people are saying, you know, or to draw valid conclusion. So whatever argument you will raise based on the data that has been given to you is the sole responsibility of the researcher, but not any other thing. So that gives you, um, that should tell you that the same data can be interpreted differently by different researchers. Okay, let's assume um, we gathered the data and let's say the participant is saying that whenever I give my children Gary and Beans, they behave um, weirdly. Okay, that is the data you have gathered. Now one, as an interpreter, you may want to speculate or draw inferences and say that your, your um, children, your children behave badly after eating curry and beans because one, you don't cook it well. Two, they are allergic to um, curry and beans. Three, probably they get too satisfied to the extent that they feel so happy. These are all explanations that you can give to the fact that um, uh, the, the, the respondents' children behave weirdly after eating dairy and beans. So how I will interpret that will be different from how somebody else will interpret that. But unlike, unlike this one, let's take a quantitative research. When the quantitative research says there is a statistically significant difference between female and male and female's perception towards education, that is that. Okay? There is nothing more you can say that will be different from what other um, a researcher will say, but in this uh, in qualitative study, the inferences, the conclusions, the interpretation that one would draw will be different across different researchers. Okay, and that is why the issue of subjectivity comes into play in qualitative research. Okay, so then what what next? Then we need to understand that it is the researcher who does the explanation of the data. Okay, it is the researcher who does the explanation. The researcher has to make sense of the data collected. So as I was saying, if my children behave weirdly after eating um, Gary MBs, qualitative researcher, I draw the conclusion that um, might interpret that to be that my children do not get satisfied or my children um, are allergic to Gary MBs. Okay, so it depends on the, the view of the researcher. So subjectivity is one um, issue in qualitative data presentation. So this is a, um, a note that I, I want you to take. But let's now um, go into the qualitative data analysis process. After collecting your data, transcribing the data, what do you do? Let's go through the process one after the other. Okay, so the steps involved in qualitative data analysis or presentation 
as follows. One, after gathering the data, whether audio data or video data or field notes, you need to transcribe the data. What do I mean by transcription? We need to translate whatever data we have gathered into writing. That is one. Two, we have to read the transcript. What we have transcribed, we have to read it carefully. Why do we read it? We will talk about that. Today, we have to do what we call coding. And what is coding? We will talk about that in detail. And then four, we have to organize the codes into categories so that we can interpret the data based on the research questions that um, guide our study. And then report and interpret the codes. Okay, as I was saying, the code um, is the sense we made out of the data and we have to give interpretations to the codes. And then the last thing we need to consider is to verify the interpretation. And we will talk about what verification of interpretation means. So these are the processes involving qualitative data analysis. Now let's go to data transcription. Now transcription, as I said earlier, has to do with translating whatever data, whatever audio or video recording you, 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 you collected from the field into writing. We have to write it down so that we can read and understand um, the views of the respondents. But we need to understand that, that there are um, various types of transcription. Uh, basically, we will talk about two here. One, we have the verbatim transcription. Why verbatim? In this case, we consider whatever information that um, we hear in the audio recording or video recording relevant. So we have to transcribe everything, write everything down. And it has a purpose. People would argue that the emotion, the laughs, the shouting, the background noises even contribute to the meaning. Why emotion? The manner in which someone says something can give us a different kind of meaning. Mm. Uh, in, in, in the linguistics, we term this as the affective meaning. The emotion one attaches to what he says can even give us a clue whether the person is lying or telling the truth. So that is verbatim translation. The laughs, the emotion, whatever noise we hear must be captured in our transcripts. But this is usually relevant when we are dealing with um, legal records, okay, or movies or films. But sometimes it can, it can be relevant in um, research as well. And then too, we have selective transcription or the edited transcription. What is that? Sometimes we may, we may also consider the fact that most of the noise, the emotion, the laughs, and then the shouting and the background noise, and then even the stammering that um, the respondents will give us in the data may not be relevant. Why? Because even if we, when we omit these gestures or sounds, the, the meaning of what they are trying to um, put across will still be the same. So any omission that does not disturb the meaning of the data is a selective kind of transcription. Okay. Now we have to also read the transcript. So reading the transcription. Why do we read? If you don't read the transcript, you will not understand what the participants are saying. So, and that is why in qualitative research, we don't usually collect data from a lot of people, okay? So when we, out of a hundred people, when we, we interview 10 people, we consider it to be um, enough, okay? The, provided we have exhausted all the features we are looking out for in our research. Okay, so, Five or 10 out of 100 is okay, because even if uh, if 10 people give you a 20 minutes interview, you may get like um, 10 to 20 pages of a transcript, okay? So 10 people will even give you more than an encyclopedia or a full book of data, okay? So that will be okay for interpretation, depending on the features or um, the elements we are looking out for in the transcript. So who does the reading? Who reads the transcript? It is the researcher because you are you are the one who is coming to 
and give us the analysis who will analyze the data. So you have to read the transcript. You have to read the transcript to understand the views of the people. And then two, the respondents, those you collected the data from, must also read the transcript. Why? For verification sake, to ensure the validity of the data. We must make sure that what we have written down reflects what the respondents were saying. We usually do this for you know ethical reasons so that we don't we don't you know deviate from what the respondent intended to say. Okay, so that is the main reason why the respondents are also important in as far as the reading of the transcript is concerned. Okay, so the point is how many times do you have to read the transcript? You have to read it severally. And why do you read it? You read it because you want to identify relevant themes that suits or that reflects the purpose of your study, okay? So when you go out there with preconceived themes, that is in the case of deductive, qualitative, um, thematic analysis, when you go out there um, with preconceived themes, then you are identifying the data based on the themes you have set out to um, analyze. Okay, but when you don't go out there with any objectives and you want the data to speak for you, so you will organize teams. But in this case, you organize teams that you feel are relevant to the study or can help you answer the research questions or can give people, uh, readers a new insight to people's views or perception towards a particular phenomenon you are um, investigating. Okay. So now let's um, go to coding. We have transcribed our data, we have read our data, and now we have to code. So what is coding? The coding as defined here are short phrases that sums up what is being said in the test. So what people are saying, people are saying something, and what they are saying reflects a notion. Such notion is the code that we need to um, give to what people are saying. So um, since qualitative um, data analysis is more like the quantitative where we can have the t-test and whatever, we have to use some examples. We have to use some examples to um, explain what we are saying right now. So I made up this data. So this is not any real data. It is coming from my, um, from me. I made this up, okay? So I assume that we are, I want you to follow because this is the analysis that we are doing. We are doing the coding and so that we can analyze. And I want you to keep these codes in mind. We will use it for subsequent um, um, discussion. Okay, so let's assume we want to um, conduct a study that seeks to understand students' preference for universities, okay? And one research question has to do with why students prefer UCC over other universities. That is our research questions. Why do um, students or people prefer UCC to other universities? Okay, so you are an interviewer. Let's see what the, interview, the, the interviewer is asking. The interviewer is asking, can you tell me that is the participant. Can you tell me why you prefer UCC to any other university? That is the question. So we expect um, the participants to speak, to say something. So the respondent one is saying, one thing I have observed about UCC is that their lecturers are always in class. Keep that in mind, always in class. If, even, if they, even if they have other activities, they will make sure the lesson comes off. So what do we, make up of this transcript. The person is trying to say that you see, he likes UCC because the lecturers um, are punctual. They are always in class. So how do we call this punctuality? Now, when you, you, have, when you have transcribed your data in a book, then you need you know, a marker or something um, to highlight that, por that portion and then write beside that person, punctuality. But when you have your data in Word, 
you can probably want to comment on that or highlight the test and then give it a comment, punctuality. That is what respondent one is saying. Now, someone would also say that, what about the data analysis, the qualitative data analysis softwares? We have the MVVO, we have the Atlas T and so on. Those are not like the quantitative data analysis softwares, like the SPSS where everything will be done for you automatically. Even if you populate your data into the um, MVVO software, you would have to do the same thing by yourself manually, okay? So the, the, the importance of the MVVO is just to keep the data and then keep the categories, the codes for you. So what you can use the MVVO to do can be done in Word or in a book because you will highlight a portion of what people are saying and then you get the notion of that and then you reduce that notion into a code. And the code in this case is punctuality because they are saying UCC lecturers comes to um, class always even if they have other activities. And that is the very reason why this respondent is saying that he likes UCC, he prefers UCC too. So another participant is saying, or respondent to is saying, I think UCC is always the best university. Even, even in the absence of the lecturers, the TS are always around to help. So what is our understanding of this quote from this respondent, that is respondent too? that even if lecturers are not around, there are adequate teaching assistants. So availability of what teaching assistant is also another code, okay? Another code. And then respondent three is also saying that sometimes it is very difficult to tell the difference between TAs and the lecturers. They all teach to my understanding. So this respondent is trying to tell us that um, the, the TAs are even more knowledgeable, are equally knowledgeable like the lecturers. So what is he saying? That the UCC as a school or as a university has competent teaching assistants, okay? So now we have three codes. We have three codes, which is substantiation, which is substantiation the, the, the reason why, the very reason why um, the respondents like UCC, okay? And the codes are uh, punctuality, availability of teaching assistants, and then competent teaching assistants, okay? So let's move on. So now we have the codes. We have three codes now. We have um, punctuality among lecturers, and then two, availability of teaching assistants, and then three, um, competent teaching assistants. So now we have the categories. So we have to now get responses that are in line with these categories. But we should also make sure that before we even generate the code, before we even categorize the responses under this code, we should have read all over the data so that we can generate all the possible codes. Okay, so now we have the three codes. Okay, so now categorize the code into themes or example. So we have punctuality, and we have competent TEs. Let's work with these two. Okay, now we are going to gather all responses that are in line with punctuality. And, and then since I, I have this um, imaginative data, I'll just paste them here. Now, see the data. Now, data, we have three responses that are in line with punctuality. One is saying, I have observed that UCC lecturers are always in class. Even if they ha have other activities, they will make sure the lesson comes up. Another participant is also saying, I choose UCC because in UCC, there is nothing like it is raining, okay? Whether rain or fire the lecturers are around to teach. This person also saying the same thing that there is nothing like it, it is raining or um, there's a fire outbreak. UCC lecturers will be in school to make sure that lessons are in progress. So it is punctuality. And then we have another respondent, that respondent who is also saying that the school is such a competitive one. In this school, lecturers rather wait for students, not the, vi the vice versa, okay? so. This one is also saying that even before students get to the lecture room, 
the lecturer will be there already waiting for them. So they are all talking about punctuality. So now we have, we have guarded responses that are in line with punctuality, which are um, reasons why participants are saying they like UCC or they prefer UCC to other universities. Now, in line with competent TAs, let's see what participants are saying. Okay, respondent one is saying, I like them because their TAs are very knowledgeable. Okay, so this person is saying their TAs are knowledgeable, so he likes them, he likes the school. And then other, the, the, the other participant is also saying, this school is unique. It is even hard to differentiate between a TA and a lecturer. They are equally good. So this is what they are saying. Now you have organized it. Do you know the teams? I can say, or you may want to say that now you are done with the analysis. Now you know your findings. Your findings are what? Punctuality. In terms of the reasons why um, UCC uh, is preferred to other universities, punctuality is one. That is your finding. Competent TEs, that is your finding. But the point is, do you leave it like this? You have to interpret it, okay? You have to interpret the results, what they are saying, draw inferences, conclusions, okay, based on what they are saying. And that is the responsibility of the researcher, but not any software, okay? Not your supervisor, it is you. That is why we say qualitative research is always subjective, okay? How I will interpret this will be different from how another researcher will interpret the same thing. Okay, so now let's move to the next step. Having categorized the codes, let's move to the next step. Now, what are the steps? Now we, 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 we have our findings. We know the codes, we know what they are saying. They are saying they prefer UCC because lecturers are punctual, they have competent TAs, and the TAs are also punctual. So now we have the findings, is that not it? But the point is we need to um, analyze these codes under the research questions. So what are the steps in presenting the qualitative results? One, as usual, when we are starting with our, we are starting to analyze our data, we need to restate the question. Sometimes in elsewhere, we, you may not need to restate them, but in our circles, we have to restate, restate the research question. Now, why are we restating the, we, we want to refresh their mind what the research question is about. So when you, you write your research question, now tell readers the purpose of the research question. If you want to, I'm not saying it is static, that, that is the only way you, you, you have to um, analyze your data. If you want to, but usually you will be asked to restate your research question. Tell readers the purpose of the research question. Tell readers about the participant who responded who, who, who responded to the research question. Because in qualitative data, probably you, 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 you were doing a sort of triangulation. So you, you, you got the data from teachers, from respondents. So it will be very proper or appropriate to state the participant who responded in that regard. Okay, now two. Introduce the team or the topic. After writing the research question, tell us about the team you are coming to talk about. Tell us about the, the insight you have gained as far as the research question is concerned, as far as um, the, resp the, the responses from the respondents are concerned. Okay. We will work examples and you would appreciate why we are saying so. So, and then after that, you have introduced the major teams. What did you find? Present that. You are telling us that UCC lecturers are indeed punctual. Okay, that is what the data said. But then how do we believe in what you, you said? We need to present evidence. The presentation of evidence is nothing but what the respondents, the respondents said in that regard. Okay, so you are saying UCC lecturers are punctual. What shows that is true? It is true because a participant, for instance, said this. A participant, for instance, said that. Okay, so show readers 
specific codes that substantiate the topic or the theme. Okay, if possible or if available, you need to do data triangulation. Why? Data you collected from the students um, is an evidence to the fact that teachers are um, punctual. Probably you collected other data from, let's say, parents or teachers, and they are all saying the same thing. So that will give you, a, that will give a kind of credibility to the evidence that you are using to buttress the fact that UCC lecturers are punctual. Now, after that, what do you do? We need to also comment on the data you have presented, the, the, the evidence you have given, what the participants were saying, okay? We need to comment on that. We need to say something. We need to make, we need to make guesses that because they are saying this, it means that, and that is why we need to also relate it to other researchers. Okay, that is how we comment about the data. So we need to keep that in mind. The steps, write the research question, tell us the purpose of the research question and possibly the respondents who responded to that particular research question. And then we need to also understand that the topic, the topic uh, that is the insight or the findings that we had, we need to report that. After reporting the findings, we need to um, buttress that with evidence, that is the quotes. And that is the main reason why you, you conducted interviews or you observed the class. Okay, so we need to put down the evidence. And after putting down the evidence, we don't leave it there and go. We need to comment on the quotes. Hmm? We need to speculate based on the quotes. We need to draw conclusions based on the quote. We need to make inferences based on the quote or based on what the participants are saying. So let's now move to, we are using the steps to analyze a few um, transcripts to understand what we are saying. Now let's use this example. We are using the previous um, made up data, the data I manufactured. Now, this is our research question. What are students reason for ranking UCC ahead of other universities? Sorry for the grammatical error here. So what are students reasons for ranking UCC ahead of other universities? Okay, that would need a, a, a question mark. So now this is the rest of the question. We have conducted our interviews. They have said a lot. And based on the coding and the sorting of data, we realize that punctuality is one of them. We realize that um, Competencies are one of the reasons why um, people like UCC. We also realize that punctuality among the TAs also plays a key role as far as students' preference for UCC is concerned. So as we said, the topic, you need to keep your eye on the topic. We said something about the topic. We said you need to introduce the topic and then say something about the topic. So what is the topic? The topic, as I said, is the general insight we had or the findings we, we had from the data but our understanding of the data. So what is our understanding? Our understanding as follows. So this is a sample of the analysis. The data indicate that, and I'm not saying this is the only format that you can use to present. So if um, you were to be the one presenting this, you would have, you know, rephrase this in a different sentence, okay? So it depends on you. So based on my write-up, I say the data indicate that factors such as punctuality of lecturers, availability of TS, and adequate mastery of content are the major reasons why students always rank UCC as the best university in Ghana. That is the team. That is the topic. Punctuality, availability, and an adequate mastery of content are the reasons why students are saying uh, UCC is better than other universities. Now, how do we believe that what you are saying is true? We need to do something. We need to do what? Add evidence. So where, where are the evidence that will buttress the fact that the theme or 
the topic that you introduced is really true. You need to give us a quote. So this is a quote from one of the respondents. And he is saying, one thing I have observed about UCC is that the lecturers are always in class. Even if they have other activities, they will make sure the lesson comes off. So this is an evidence that we are using to make readers understand that our claim, our topic is really true. Okay, so now we are done. We have presented the evidence. Okay, and so what? And so what? So we need to comment. The comment. We need to add comments to what the people are saying. That is what where I say we have to, you know, conclude. We have to draw inferences and others, make speculations. Okay, so how do we do that? How I would do it will be different from how you would do it. Because as I said earlier, qualitative um, interpretation is subjective in nature, and it is based on the understanding of the researcher. So how do I understand this and how do I want to comment on this? So as I said, and I said that we need to do this in relation to previous literature, okay? We need to make readers understand that what we have found has um, already been discussed by some of the authors. Okay, so I say punctuality. So I'm talking, I'm, I'm speaking to punctuality of lectures. Punctuality, as the literature suggests, plays an integral role in education and could be one of the very reasons why students may opt for a particular university. Okay, so that is the comment. We believe that punctuality is one of the key determinants of students' preference for a particular university. Okay, and then we comment, we are saying the except above, that is the quote. It's a clear indication that UCC lecturers always show professionalism. So if lecturers are um, punctual, then they are professionals. They show professionalism. That is my understanding of this whole quote. Okay, they, they show professionalism because they are always punctual. They don't miss classes. By what? By strictly adhering to the school timetable. They go according to what the university expect them to say. And I hypothetically, I believe that there is a scholar say, um, a scholar called Mesa. So Mesa 22, for instance, states that such an act of punctuality is not present in other universities. So if UCC, you are saying UCC lecturers are punctual and for that matter, you like them, then we may want to um, hypothesize that probably such an act is not present in other universities. Lecturers in other universities may not be punctual as compared to UCC, and Mensa is giving us evidence to that. Okay, so we are analyzing, we are commenting on the code based on what people are saying, people have said about um, other universities and um, UCC. So, so Mensa 2020 states that such, act, such an act of punctuality is not present in the University of Gold Coast, the Ashanti University, and the Middle Belt University. Okay, it is therefore not surprising that students will always choose UCC over other universities. That is the interpretation I have given to you. Now let's remove the topic, the evidence, and then the comments, and then we, we combine this narrative and see the, the end results. So this is the end result. Mm -hmm. So this is the end result of research question one. And remember, I just talked to only one point. So only one point, that is punctuality. Punctuality is giving me this narrative, which is almost half a page. Okay, only punctuality, half a page. Okay, so it means that even if I, I decide to talk about adequacy of mastery um, of content or adequate mastery of content and then availability of TAs, I will get a lot of things to say. Okay, so that is the nature of qualitative thematic analysis. So we can decide to also say, um, talk about adequacy of, or adequate mastery of content. With that one too, we have to, um, if you want, you have to introduce you know, a topic and then you present an evidence. But you need to also understand that you can present three, four, five evidence or four, five quotes from different respondents so that you give way to some of the claims. 
but someone will ask you, how many codes do I need for analysis? You collected data from, uh, let's say, 20 participants. It does not mean necessarily mean that you should um, present whatever each of the, each of the participants or all the participants said in the you can bring two or three because they are all saying the same thing. So two or three, it's okay. We are not quantitizing anything here. So it is okay for us to bring only um, one or two of them. Now, we are done with the interpretation. The last um, slide, talking about how do we verify the interpretation. Now, we are saying we need to do something we call the member checking. Member checking is um, a kind of, um, a it's a way of determining the validity or reliability of qualitative research, okay? We need to, after the interpretation, which is based on our subjective your understanding of what the people say, some scholars are arguing that, we need to present the interpretation to the respondent again. They will read and then give us feedback as to whether what we said is in line with what they were thinking. It's in line with their you know, assumptions or their um, imagination or whatever regarding what they said. Okay, so member checking is very important. But the point is, would you get the time to do it? So a lot of people, a lot of qualitative researchers will skip this phase. But even if you skip this phase, you should also make sure that the peer examination is done. What is peer examination? Peer examination is where after, after the interpretation, you present your interpretation or your, the write-up to a fellow researcher, to a colleague who is also knowledgeable in qualitative research or in the field, to also read over and give you feedback as to whether your interpretation are, you know, are not too biased or um, it's not you know, deviating from what um, the respondents were saying. Okay, so peer examination and then member checking are two of the ways in which you can verify into a particular code or codes is appropriate or not. Okay, so these are some of the few steps we believe that when you follow strictly, you can um, present your qualitative data in a very systematic manner. Thank you for following. Uh, thank you very thank much, you very Mr. Ines. That was very thank insightful. You. So um, um, we're opening the floor up for, for questions. Okay. So, so if you have any questions, questions, you put up you your hand. Your hand for, for, we will do it in three minutes. 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 Four questions, Four at, questions a time. at a time. So if there yes, are there any questions. Uh, please, if you please have if any you questions, have questions, please put up your hand. Um, so you take so our you first take question our from Mr. Bismarck. Mr. Bismarck, Mr. Bismarck, Mr. Bismarck if you can hear me, kindly ask your question. OK, uh, th thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, I would want to ask uh, regarding the, the hypothetical and uh, data analysis data, and interpretation data. that, that okay. he did. Okay. Yes. So we could, we could see that there were three uh, issues that were present of three findings okay. in terms of punctuality, uh, availability of the TAs yeah, and, the DAs and, then. and the other one. But in the interpretation, it appears that, I don't know, maybe it is because of, just for example, that okay. Uh, okay. the other two were not captured in the interpretation. Was it intentional or that is just a way of going about it? Okay, okay. Let okay, me, okay. Let, let me, let me, let me give you that feedback right, feedback right now. Yes, yes. You, you, saw, you saw only two because of, you know, for presentation sake, but in your actual your work, whatever team you discover in the data, you need to speak to the team. I hope you understand. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you okay. very much. So it is for the sake of the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. 
All right. All Thank right. you, Mr. Bismarck. Um, Mr. Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel, actually. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I've, I've learned some insights from the presentation. But my, my question has to do with the issue of deductive and inductive. The deductive meanings or the deductive meanings that you make out of your data. That, okay. that point, up to that point, I couldn't get it very clear. So probably if um, the, present, the presenter can throw more light on it for me. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, so do we have to respond right now? Okay. So, Mister, if I had you right, you were confused about um, the deductive analysis and then the inductive analysis. You see, sometimes we go out in the field with assumptions, okay, that the theory is saying that when people eat at six o'clock, they will, um, let's say, the, the possible effects are hangover. That is one. So, we are going to there to ask people who eat at six o'clock whether they will get hangover, okay? So hangover is one, and then two, sleepless what, night? Sleepless night, and then three, we have what, let's, let's see other possible effects of eating at night. Um, headache, headache. And then what again? Um, stomach ache. So this is what the theory is saying. So this is what we mean by preconceived themes or objectives or theories. So we have a theory. So you are conducting your study and your study is based on a theory. And the theory is telling you that if people eat at six o'clock every evening, they will develop hangover, sleepless night, headache, and then um, stomach ache, okay? And now we have a research problem. And the problem is saying that people in Dansoman eat at six o'clock and they are suffering, okay? So because of what the theory is telling us, we are going there to ask them questions that are related to what? Hangover, sleepless night, headache, and then stomach ache. Do you understand? Say like that anything that they say that are not in relation to our preconceived themes will not be considered in the analysis. Okay, but in inductive analysis, they are mostly exploratory. What I mean by exploratory is that we don't know the effects, okay? All we know is that people are eating at night in Dansoman, and for that matter, they are suffering. But we don't know the kind of suffering um, they, are, they, they are experiencing over there. So when we get to Dansoman, we ask them, when you eat, wherever, whenever you eat, you eat in the evening, how do you feel? They will talk about a lot of things. Different participants will talk about a lot of things. We don't know what we are looking out for. Now we come home, we transcribe the data, and then we start uh, reading the data. And the data will tell us um, the possible effects people are saying um, they get after eating at 6 o'clock. One of them is bad dreams. See? The bad dreams, the theory did not talk about bad dreams, but the data is telling us that bad dreams occur when you eat at six o'clock, okay? And then the other possible is um, bedwetting, right? So these are these, yes. these were not anticipated, okay? But the data, okay. the data is revealing all this. This is inductive because we did not go there with the preconceived themes that is hangover that the theory is telling us that hangover uh, sleepless night are the possible causes we okay. allow the data to speak for us okay. and that is the beauty of qualitative research you may go out there with research questions and objectives and themes that you may be looking at but someone will tell you something new the moment you add that, you add that um, something new to the interpretation, you are in a way doing inductive analysis. So we don't usually um, talk about inductive analysis because they are mostly in grounded theories. And in grounded theory, you go out there and you allow the 
data to generate theories for you based on what people are saying. So you can formulate an assumption out of what people are saying. By in deductive, oh. you are there based on what the theory says you will. So you are going to discover what the theory is telling you. All right. OK, I get it. Uh, do, you, do you make sense out of the, the scenario? Yes, please. Yes, please. It's well understood. Okay. Yes, so you, you you may want to read more about it and um, you know um, get a second yes. a second um, yes, second point of view. Yeah. Yeah. The understanding I got is that it means that for the deductive, right from the onset of your your study, when you set yes. up your objectives, you clearly see that okay, this study is being guided by a specified theory, and the theory will okay. guide you with preconceived things. Yes, some are yes. yes. Okay. okay. Thank so you. That, very that much. is it. That is it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All, right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, the uh, floor is open for questions. So if you have any right. questions, please put up your hand. Uh, iPad. Uh, iPad. <laughs> yes, uh, I have a question. Good evening. Okay. Okay. Go on. Go on. You know, when we talk about transcribing the data, especially from focus groups, yeah, do we have any okay. software? Do we have any software that can assist in this process? Okay, for data um, transcription, we have yeah. software that can help us to transcribe the data. But we have to make sure that the language, because you know, we are living in an English world, everything is in English, or probably French or something. For us mm -hmm. in the, you know, any data that um, is, you know, somewhat Ghanaian language, she, whatever, French, because our language is not internationally um, um, well, well recognized in terms of technology, you may not use those, uh, you may not be able to use those. So we have um, a transcription software like um, Audacity, Audacity, when you populate your the, the audio or you upload the audio into Audacity, it will transcribe it into writing. But the point is, you have to buy this. You have to buy it from um, the store, yeah, from the web. And it may be very um, expensive. And then we have other one called, I think, Balaboka or something. Okay, there are a lot of them. So they can do the transcription for you. But is that, uh, thank you for that. Um... In terms of reliable, uh, is there any particular, in terms of reliability, is there any particular software that you would recommend in terms of reliability? Um, reliability and accurate, and accurate, and accurate, sorry, accuracy. Accuracy in terms of um, the transcription. Yes. So the audacity will help you with the accuracy. Okay. okay. And then the accuracy is some somehow subjective, because sometimes. The person might be, may be speaking English, but the kind of accent the person is using may not be recognized by the software, and that will create, you know, um, some form of, you know, anomaly which you may have to correct manually. Yes, you understand? Okay. It depends on the but, accent, you know. Some uh, the African accent is not that close to the um, the foreign accent, and that could, can also create problems in terms of reliability of the transcription. Um, okay. So one other question: Have you have you used any of the software yourself? No, please. I don't use the software because one, it is um, quite expensive to get. But I'm planning, I'm planning to get one of them and um, to do a big project that is upcoming. Apart from okay. that, um, without that, I do manual transcription. Okay, but, but I do manual transcription, or probably you can get um, your colleagues to help you transcribe. The, but that is, that comes with dangers. Because there is someone doing the hard work for you, the dangers are that they may omit a lot of things. So oh. the task now is on you to perform the transcription. All right, thank you very much. Okay. All right, thank you very much, sir. Um, the floor is still open for questions. So if you have any questions, please pick up. Okay, Mr. Um, good evening, presenters. Good evening. This has been an insightful presentation. In fact, I was waiting for this day to have access to this presentation. 
I've missed a lot. I know I've missed a lot from the previous presentations. Okay. Your team is is very good. They are so excellent in their presentation. My question is on the, the coding aspect. Again. The coding, coding, C O D I. Okay. okay. And the teaming. The difference okay. between the coding and the teams. Okay. So and I'm 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 not that place. You are you are not that convinced. Um, the difference I'm, 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 talk, I'm, I'm not finished with my question. Okay, you can. Let me finish and then you, you come in. Okay. Then um, the teaming and the coding, that's what I'm talking about, the difference between the two of them, <laughs> both of them. Then we have uh, the quotation. In fact, you have really opened my mind to the quotation system. Earlier on, I thought quotation is a form of teaming. Team. <laughs> but today oh, okay. you made it uh, that quotation, you're like, you're quoting what the respondent is telling you. Okay. If I'm clear with your presentation, that what okay, is one okay. of the that one is what you are trying to say. Okay. And okay. when you have respondents, one like a uh, respondent of 18 respondents, and you want to uh, fix some of the codes, as you are saying, it means that in each team, as we are saying, so select at least or uh, a maximum of three codes from each team or each code. Okay. Is that, is, is that right? If I get you understand. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there, yeah. no, there is no threshold, okay? Okay. Okay, okay so okay. should I respond? Okay, let me respond to this one before yes. I forget. So there is okay. no threshold as to the number of participants you have to present their codes. There is no mm -hmm. threshold. But what we are saying is that at least get two or three of them so that we know that what the first person said has been said by you know other participants. But since we are not dealing, we are not quantitizing, we don't, we, we don't say we are um, populating all the 18 respondents, what they said, into the narrative or into the interpretation to, to, to lend weight to what um, the claims. No, you can use two, three, four. You don't have to populate everything, okay? Okay, so. Yeah. so that is the point. But there the is no threshold. It is not. There is no established um, number of codes you should um, use. As, okay, well, okay. The difference. Um, the difference between the coding and then the team. Okay. You see, coding, coding and teaming. To me personally, I would say they are the same. Coding is where you assign. You know, you assign phrases. As I said earlier, let me, let me, let me, let me. Yes. What is coding? This is. Coding. This is this is quotes. Okay, this is a quote. The quote is what the person is saying, and then the code is the inside, the understanding of what the person is saying. So that is why we are saying there are short phrases that we use to represent um, the entire narrative given by a particular person. So if the person is saying something which reflects a notion, that notion is what we code okay so we will give it a name and that name we give we give to um, to that um, narrative or quotes is what we term as the team because it is presenting an understanding okay it is presenting a topic that is why it is a team so teaming and coding actually they are the same thing okay the moment you identify a code you have identified the team okay and you need to also know that they could be general team and then the sub teams explaining the general team. Okay, so we have teams. We can have a team and we can have sub teams that are that comes together to explain the general the, the the broad team. Okay, so they are basically the same thing. They are interwoven. Okay, earlier on, what I knew uh, was holding in my okay. mind that the team is like a broad heading and the sub of the teams will become the coding. If I'm right, I'm wrong with that. Can that be okay, right? so you, you believe um, the team is the broad heading and then and the, the, the sub-teams sub are the... Yes. The sub-teams are the, the, the codes. Yes. Uh, oh, that's my well, 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 well. <laughs> very, very good for that um, explanation, but we shouldn't confuse ourselves with that, okay? Mm. Coding is a teaming process. Okay, coding is a teaming process because we are we are we are just giving the interpretations or the um, the quotations a kind of understanding, a kind of topic. Okay, so the, the 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 topic we give to 
you know, particular quotes from someone is what we term as a team. That in the process of doing that is what we term as the coding process. Okay. And it's the same as teaming because they, 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 they all reflect the fact that you are um, assigning, you know, um, a notion to what someone is saying. Thank you, sir. Okay. And then you ask, sir, um, sir, uh, I think you also asked the difference between the quotes. Yes. You said you thought the quote was what? The, the code, the code, like earlier on, I thought the codes were a different form of teaming. <laughs> and oh, I didn't no. know it's like a verbatim picking of what the respondent is telling you. You no, no, the code is the verbatim, you know, representation of what the, the people and the respondent is telling us. So is that that is different from um, the code. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, much. Uh, Mr. Abu. Yeah, you understand very good. The floor is open for questions. So if you have any questions, please put up. All right. Uh, it looks as if there are no more. So um, we'll be ending this. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ines for so being the coordinator of the uh, On behalf of the that she would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to all of you who joined today. From the beginning of this research journey, uh, this program has been very insightful. Hopefully, next time um, we'll be doing similar programs like this as so well. Participate, participate and take some time. So, so we are yeah, very humbled by your uh, presence and we hope you've, you've gotten, gotten some experience, experience from it. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Thank you, Thank once, you once again. again. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night.